Welcome to chapter 12, uh, second lecture. We'll cover alkyne reduction in this one, alkyne hydrogenation. Reduction of alkynes is very similar to alkenes. We will be in 12.5 to start. Reduction of alkynes, 12.5. So, essentially, you take an alkyne, you add H2 excess palladium over carbon, you get an alkyne, you get a cis to be specific because you get this syn addition. These H's are added to the same face at the same time, so you get an alkene. And then it keeps going, and it, in some cases it can stop there at the alkene, in some cases it cannot, and you get an alkene. So it's just, this is a big picture, we can go through the alkene, sometimes we can stop there, we'll talk about that, and um, sometimes, you, sometimes it keeps going, and it's not controlled. So, uh, let's just do a couple examples. With these conditions, you cannot stop. It's going to go all the way to the alkene. H2 excess. You can't stop it by just adding one equivalent of H2. You cannot. Okay, just to repeat that. You cannot stop it at the alkene just by adding one equivalent. Okay, it just doesn't work that way. Here you get butane, right? You add two equivalents, essentially, of hydrogen across this triple bond, and that's what you get. Okay. Now let's show something that will not reduce with an alkyne that will be reduced is this aromatic, right? We said these are aromatics. We've introduced these over the course. H2 palladium over carbon. These, what look like double bonds, will not get reduced. So you get what's called ethyl benzene. Okay? This is not reduced. Okay? And it's because there's aromatic stability. You can reduce them. We'll talk about those in organic too. But the point is, is that's not getting reduced. Okay? It's an aromatic. It's not just. An, it's not just three alkenes. Okay. So we can. H2 will always be excess. And but how do we stop at the alkene? There is a way to do it. Okay. You got to add a special. You have to add a special catalyst. Okay. And it's called Lindlar's catalyst. And it is a combination of several things. So instead of palladium over carbon, it's palladium over calcium carbonate, um, lead acetate, and quinoline. A very a special amine. Looks like pyridine, but it's got an extra aromatic ring there. Okay. Quinoline. This combination, I'm not going to make you memorize that and give me those, but I want you to recognize them. And I may or may not write Linlar or Linlar's catalyst underneath it, okay? And so I can do either one. I can give you the conditions or I can just write Linlar, okay? So you should associate Linlar with what is called poisoning, okay? This, this catalyst system poisons. Um, the system or deactivates, deactivates it so that you can get to the cis alkene. And this is complicated. I'm not sure that anybody actually knows exactly why this happens, but you need to be able to predict products of these reactions. Okay? And all right, we have an alkene. And we add now we had H2 Lindlar. And what do we get? We get the cis alkene. Okay, we're going to see how we can make the trans. Here we get the cis because you get syn addition of any hydrogenation. Linlar poisons it so that the alkene cannot be reduced. Probably the alkene is binding to the lead or something like that and, and so that it doesn't go any further. Okay, So that's, that's an example. Let's give you another example with an aromatic ring that doesn't get reduced. So I want you to recognize that this aromatic ring is not going to get reduced. 
H2, Lindlar, what happens? You get a cis double bond. Notice the aromatic ring is not reduced. You could draw this the other way too, right? You could put the phenyl and the CH3 on the top. That's just a tumble in space. Okay. Let's show a couple more examples of selective Linlar reduction. Again, you should be able to predict products like this. No mechanism and no memorizing of these reagents. Oops. All right, that's a CH2, CH3. Disregard that squiggly. It's an ethyl group on the alkyne. Okay. What happens? H2, Linlar gives you. Notice the double bond is not reduced. Okay, you get only reduction of the alkyne to the cis. It's selective. Okay. Give you another one to take home so you can predict. happens H2, Linlar, you predict those products. Okay, so tell me what happens with that alkene. I'm sorry, that alkyne. It's an, it's an enine. <clears throat> There's an alkene and an alkyne, okay? So that's how you can form cis alkenes selectively, okay, from alkynes. You can also form trans alkenes from alkynes. You can take an alkyne and treat it with sodium metal. Sodium zero means it's the zero oxidation state. It's pure metal. What do you know about sodium? It really wants to give up an electron. That's a hint about the mechanism. Okay, we use ammonia and we use liquid ammonia. That's just an L. It's the liquid. It's the solvent. This is the way these work. Again, I won't ask you to give these conditions, but you need to recognize them. You need to be able to recognize that an alkyne with um, uh, liquid, or I'm sorry, uh, liquid ammonia and sodium is going to give a trans double bond. Okay. So here, this is a, uh, this is a mechanism you don't need to know. I'll point those out from time to time. Okay. Generally speaking, you need to know all the mechanisms on the videos, but there's a few that are either pseudo mechanisms like the hydrogenation, H2 palladium over carbon, or this one's probably less of a pseudo mechanism, but it's not one I'm going to make you write out. Okay, but what we have happen is that sodium zero gives up an electron and goes to sodium plus. Right? Where does that electron go? Okay, there's the electron. <clears throat> Just like sodium will transfer an electron to chloride or chlorine, atomic chlorine to give you know chloride. This electron can be donated into that carbon. We show a fish hook arrow. This is a good introduction into radical chemistry. Okay, We have just half of an arrowhead. It's pumping into the system and then these electrons come up here and sit on that carbon. What do you get there? You get a radical anion. This radical anion is stabilized by the sodium to some degree. And then when you have a carbanion, what can happen is you can then deprotonate ammonia. Okay, ammonia is not a very good base, but when you have a carbanion, right, the element effect, you can deprotonate. Those electrons go to nitrogen. What do you get? You get sodium NH2 minus, and you're left with a radical only. Okay. Another electron then will come in here, donate another fish hook type of scenario. Give you another anion, 
and then what happens? You can pick up a proton from NH3 again, so it's it's repetitive. Okay, and you get that product, and you generate another equivalent of NaNH2. Okay, so again, that mechanism I'm not going to make you draw it, but I want you to be able to predict products. That's how it's working. All right. The trans intermediate here, the radical anion, is probably more stabilized on the trans because the charges, the electron density, is separated more. Okay, that's the argument why you don't get cis here. So this, um, we call this uh, dissolving metal reduction. Okay, a dissolving metal, you can use other metals, but dissolving sodium reduction gives trans. Linlar gives cis. Linlar gives cis. Dissolving metal gives trans. So let's summarize what we've talked about here. We got an alkyne in the middle with an aromatic. That aromatic will not be reduced. What's going to happen if you add H2 palladium over carbon by itself? You're going to get the alkane. Again, none of these will reduce the aromatic, which you reduce the alkyne all the way, and there's excess H2. There's always, you can assume there's always excess H2. One equivalent is not how we how we stop these things. Here, H2, even if it were excess, and you have Linlar, it poisons. What do you get? You get a cis double bond. All right, we showed that one. So you get cis only with Linlar. How do you get trans? You use sodium metal, NH3, liquid ammonia, and you get a trans double bond only. Okay, so you can get cis, you can get trans, you can get alkane. You can get all those things. Okay, so we'll stop there. That's alkyne reduction. And then we'll pick up next time with reduction of uh, CX bonds or CO bonds. Okay, CX meaning um, alkyl halides, and then CO bonds, mostly epo really epoxides, is what we're going to be looking at next. So we'll finish up reduction in the next video and then we'll go from there.